So in this session, we continue our discussion on the associative property for the whole numbers and we will be taking multiplication this time. So now let us just try to follow again what we did earlier for trying to check for the associativity. So what we do is we try to find the product of three whole numbers. Right? So let us, uh, for example, let me take three numbers as um, as 2 into 5 into 4. Hmm? And I would now like to multiply these three numbers. So how do I do it? Okay, so one way, right? One way to do is, is I group 2 and 5 together. Okay, I do that first. So 2 cross 5 becomes 10 and then I multiply this product 10 by 4. So this gives me 40. Okay, now let us try to do it in another way. In this, instead of grouping the first two numbers, we group the last two numbers. That is 2 into 5 cross 4. So two, when 5 is multiplied by 4, we have 2 multiplied by 20. So when I take this part, then also we get 40. So what we have seen here that even when we change the grouping of the numbers for multiplication, we still get the same result. So let me write this down. Let me write this observation for you here. Results for multiplication. remain same irrespective of grouping of numbers so we can conclude that whole numbers are associated. under multiplication. That is the result. So let me box it for you to highlight it now what is the importance of this property how is this associativity important for us let us try to have a look at a couple of examples which will make it more clearer so we are going to discuss about the importance of associative property for multiplication. Now let me take one example. So let us say that we have uh, we have to multiply 12 by 35. Now how do I do this? So my goal is to make this calculation fast, fast and convenient. So I can do is I can write this 12 as 6 multiplied by 2. Right, this 12 could be written as 6 multiplied by 2 and then this 35 I keep it as it is okay so now I have three numbers now what can I do I can group the numbers for convenience right so what I will do is I'll simply group these two because I know that 35 multiplied by 2 or 2 multiplied by 35 gives me 70 so what I am left with is 6 multiplied by 70 and you know that 
6 multiplied by 70 is straight away 420. Okay, not just that, you can try the other way around as well. There is another way. Instead of splitting this 12, let, let's see if we can split the 35. So what I can do is I can write 12 cross 35. That is 12 multiplied by 35 as 12 multiplied by 7 by 5. 7 multiplied by 5 is 35. Now, is there a way in which I can group this? Is there a way in which I can group this? Yes, I can. But then, I mean, if I multiply 12 by 7, well, I will have to think a bit. It is not that easy. But what if I multiply 12 by 5? Yes, I know it's 60. So what I can do is I can just change this order and I can write as 12 into 5 into 7. Okay, so now and then I group these two. Okay, it's because 12 by 5 is 60. 12 multiplied by 5 gives me 60, which when multiplied by 7 gives me 420. Okay, so if you see this, see this is a single product and we solved it in two of the possible ways. Of course, you could have written this 35 as 5 by 7. So you, you would have easily saved this step here. So what we could have written here is 12 multiplied by 5 by 7. Okay, and then we could have grouped this 12 and 5 together as we did here earlier. 12 into 5 into 7. Again, it will lead you to 60 multiplied by 7, which gives you 420. Okay, so this exhibits the importance of property. So again, it is for convenient grouping. Convenient grouping of numbers. And just keep in mind that there is no one best way to do it. It's like there are multiple ways and it also depends on the type of product that we are looking into. Okay, let, let, let us take another example which might be a bit different and difficult. So for example, we have to multiply 8 by a number 1769 and we also have to multiply this by 125. Now how do I take this product? So okay 8 multiplied by 71769 okay it will take me some time and if I want to multiply this by this it will take even more time now is there a way in which I can group this so that I can arrive at my answer faster yes it does look like multiplying 8 by 125 should be easy okay so what do we do so we first change the order so we first change 125 into 1769 and from the commutative property for multiplication you should be remembering that even if we change the order of multiplication the result doesn't change so we change it and now we can group conveniently so we will be grouping 8 with 125 so that we do this operation first that is we do this multiplication first and then we will multiply it by 1769 now 8 multiplied with 125 it gives me 1000 which I have to multiply by 1769 and in this case my answer is simply 1769 followed by three zeros so you just saw another example in which we again used convenient grouping to arrive at an answer very fast you can take I mean similar you can take another example as well for for example we have 25 that needs to be multiplied by 8358 and again it needs to be multiplied by 4. Now what is it that I can multiply here easily? I know 25 by 4 is 100 so I will apply the commutative property for multiplication and change the order of the numbers. I am sure that the result is not going to change and then I group these two together because it is very convenient for me to get this product then it's just 100 multiplied by 8358 and then I simply the product that I'll get is 8358 followed by two zeros it's 8,35,800 so this gives you the importance of the associativity for multiplication so we, we definitely use this property even without knowing it right you might be using it in your day-to-day -day lives so, so, okay, so see you in the next session.